to fly or not to fly, that is the question. Boeing is now trying to ease fears and concerns over catching coronavirus when flying. It's launching a confident travel initiative, working with airlines to screen passengers and sanitize aircraft. Some carriers are facing criticism from the US health officials for booking flights to capacity. That is something that is of concern. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what went into that decision making. When they announced that the other day, obviously there was substantial disappointment with American Airlines. A number of the airlines had decided to keep the middle seat thing. Um, I can't say this is under critical review right now um, by us at CDC. Um, we don't think it's the right message. We'll talk about the, critic, the middle seat with Dr. Jim Haas, the, uh, who's Director of Product Marketing for Bo Boeing Commercial Planes. Jim's with me from, <coughs> joins me now. And we'll talk about um, uh, middle seats in a moment. I just want to go back to this core idea that you can catch the virus on a plane. Now, I know all about the HPAA filters, hospital grade, uh, air goes down, sanitation. But there's still this fear that you can catch the virus on a plane. Yes, and Richard, we want to reassure passengers about the uh, safety and the multiple layers of protection we're working with the industry to put in the air travel journey. So this really goes not just on the airplane, but from the entire journey, from the time a passenger leaves home until he leaves the airplane. So let me walk you through that, because this will look a little bit different for the passengers. So passengers at home will be doing a health check. Many airlines are asking them to confirm they have not had any virus-like symptoms. When they get to the airport, they'll notice more spacing, more sanitation stations, uh, perhaps some temperature checks. The whole purpose of this is to establish a layer of protection to keep the viruses off the airplane. Now, before the passengers get on the airplane, there's another layer of protection. We're working very carefully with airlines to make sure they understand how to disinfect the airplane and all the techniques and technologies that go with that. And then to your point, once passengers are on board the airplane, uh, the way the cabin air flows vertically downward, not front to back, the effectiveness of the HEPA filters pulling out 99.9% .9 of the viruses and bacteria, and the rate at which the air is exchanged in the cabin. Every two to three minutes, the volume of cabin air is totally exchanged. All those really provide extra layers of protection for air travel. Jim, Jim, but you, but you would have, you know, listening to what uh, the two health experts from the CDC and the NIH say, Dr. Fauci says, you'd agree that if you have the misfortune to sit next to somebody, a stranger who has the virus, there's a racing chance that you will get it. So. There are a couple of things here. I think those comments were made without understanding the context of multiple layers of protection. So in everyday life, people are used to personal spacing. That's something we've all become accustomed to. But also in everyday life, there are those situations where personal spacing isn't either practical or possible. For instance, if you go get a haircut, you go to the doctor or the dentist. In those cases, other countermeasures are used. We are setting up these other countermeasures in air travel through these multiple layers of protection. Now, to address your point of what if you're sitting next to somebody who has a virus, the multiple layers of protection really are designed to prevent that person from getting on the airplane. But if he does, this is why we recommend that passengers wear face masks. It's really part of a personal responsibility of not only not traveling if you feel ill, sure. but also protecting yourself. So we're protecting ourselves and right. others when we travel. I, 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 see, I see where you're going with that. Uh, look, I, I, I'm due to take a flight myself in just a, a week or, or, or so, and I probably travel more than, than, than most. Um, I, I don't really have a concern because I'm aware of all the filters and this, that and the other. What I'm concerned about is the system breaking down, I don't mean the filter system, I mean suddenly uh, aisles get clogged, suddenly there's too many people through security, suddenly the best laid plans to keep us separated fail. 
Yes. And so this is why we're working with the airports to put in new procedures to help maintain that spacing. But again, it all goes back to uh, trying to prevent people who are ill from flying. And, you know, an interesting point on this, Richard, is looking at the data. The International Air Transport Association did a pretty extensive survey of over 18 major carriers from January through March of the year. So this is before all these protective layers were in place. And they interviewed and did contact tracing with many, many people. What they found was that they could not find any evidence of passenger to passenger transmission on all of those flights. So even without these protective measures, it appears that the odds of catching a virus from another passenger on the flight are not high, they're low. All these additional protective measures would make that even lower.